The new Galaxy S3 from Samsung is the successor to the really successful Galaxy S2 from last year. Um, as of last year, the Galaxy S2 was one of the first dual-core handsets, and this year Samsung have done it again with one of the first quad-core handsets. So let's take a look at the external features and get into this. So if I just zoom out here quickly, um, you can see this really, really massive 4.8 inch screen on the front here. This has a resolution of 1280 by 720, which means you're gonna get really, really crisp, crystal clear text and pictures. And it's also um, what's called a Super AMOLED display, which means colors are gonna look absolutely fantastic. The screen's gonna be really nice and bright. Um, it's quite light at 133 grams for a phone of this size. You know, that's really light. You can barely feel it in your pocket, to be honest. And at 8.6 millimeters thick, that's pretty damn thin as well, making it more pocketable. Because a lot of people are put off by the initial size, seeing the 4.8 inch screen, thinking it's not going to fit in, a, in their pockets. But it really does, to be honest. It fits in the pockets quite well. And this is definitely helped by the thin and sleek profile of the phone. As for the actual finish of the phone, uh, it's all this kind of a uh, glazed plastic look, but if you you can see here, it's not just a boring blue plastic. This is the blue variant of the phone, and you can see it's almost like a brushed metal look um, beneath, beneath this plastic overlay, this plastic glazing, and it looks really nice to be honest. You've got these silver accents down here, everything that has a little bit of blue in it, everything looks a little bit brushed. It's not just a boring plastic clamshell around a around the phone, it's, it's quite nice to be honest and this, this screen um, curves off at the edges there meaning like if you're swiping between things you know you don't get to like a ridge like a lot of phones have like uh, the screen is beneath is like uh, a little bit recessed into the body of the phone which means you get to the end it's like duff onto the edge of the phone it's not as seamless but really nice using this phone fits in the hand really really well and on the whole, I just really like the look of it. It has had quite a bit of criticism in the past, but uh, for me, I think it's really good. So on the front here, you've got your speaker bar, you've got a 1.3 megapixel camera, you've got your proximity sensor, motion sensor, and also an ambient light sensor here. You've got the 4.8 inch screen that I've already talked about. You have this one home button here, one physical button that actually pushes down, and then on the side, you've got a menu button and a back button there which are capacitive touch buttons and only light up when the phone's on. On the back you've got an 8 megapixel camera with autofocus of course. Uh, you've got the speaker here which isn't too bad to be honest. It's quite loud. It's not the bassiest or most uh, rich sounding f uh, speakerphone but you know it does a good job of making things loud and you've also got the uh, flash there for darker shots. On the top here you've got a headphone jack along with a secondary microphone and this pull tab to pull the battery cover off. Under which we have a 2100 milliamp hour battery which should be good for powering the phone for well, over a day to be honest. We have a lot of problem with getting uh, phones to last more than a day nowadays but uh, saying that, I have had a day and a half of usage out of this battery, really impressive. You've got a micro SD slot here for expanding the inbuilt storage, and you've got a micro SIM slot there. So that's every, everything beneath the battery cover there. It just clips on. It's one thing about Samsung's, they always predominantly use um, plastic. And it can feel a little bit cheap, but it's not too bad on the whole. You can tell it's not cheap rubbish plastic. It is quite nice. On the left here, you've got a volume rocker, which feels a little bit cheap, to be honest. Um, it's not like a satisfying click, as I always put it, but it does its job at the end of the day. It's not going to fall off in your hands. Um, the power button, on the other hand, isn't. I'm not a fan of this power button. Uh, I'm not a, usually a fan of power buttons, but uh, this one's not particularly good. 
uh, you press it and it's a bit of a mushy feeling there, it's not like a satisfying clunk, you knew the phone's going to turn on, it's like hit or miss whether it actually turns it on or not, which is a bit funny. But on the bottom you've got the micro USB port there for charging and syncing and the primary microphone there. So uh, on the inside of the phone, which is probably quite important to a lot of people nowadays, you've got a quad-core Exynos processor running at 1.4 gigahertz. Uh, like I said, this is one of the first quad-core phones you'll see on the market. Really, really powerful and really efficient as well. I mean, people think more cores, you know, it's going to use more battery life. But with this phone, it's got a humongous battery on it. Uh, it will last quite a while. The quad-core processor doesn't hamper the battery life whatsoever. Um, and then, my god, it definitely helps with performance. Everything is pretty much lagless. And the home screen, they're really, really just so smooth. You can definitely see the quad core processor working there. Um, so, this is Samsung's TouchWiz interface. It's a bit more streamlined than what we've seen on previous Samsung devices. Um, I find it really nice, there's a obvious ICS uh, theme to it, and then you can go through your apps like this, that's what they get sued for all the time obviously. Um, then you've got your widgets, Samsung have put in a couple good widgets, I'll just uh, find them. Dual clock for example, can be quite useful if you're darting around the world and you need to know the time. And then you just drag this and you can then drag that down to the delete bar there. Flipboard is another one that Samsung has included. Gives you all the news that you want, it's customised to you. Uh, if we open the Flipboard app. Let's go, let's go through all the apps that Samsung has included. Right, first of all, I'll go in alphabetical order. You get this all share here, which is basically, uh, if, if you've heard of iCloud, the Apple Cloud um, solution, it's kind of similar to that. It goes uh, all, the, all your files and documents and videos, music, all that can be shared across multiple devices wherever you are in the world, which is pretty handy. And you get five gigabytes of storage free. Uh, what else have they included? They've used, uh, they, oh, whoops. Clicked the wrong button there. Uh, chat on here, which is pretty much like their version of iMessage. I personally don't use it. Um, they've got their standard uh, email app there. Dropbox is included as standard when you're setting up the phone. And I find this brilliant with the Galaxy S3 at the moment you get 50 gigabytes of Dropbox storage absolutely free, which is amazing. Considering on iCloud and uh, other services, you only get five gigabytes of free before you have to uh, subscribe and get and pay more money. Uh, Flipboard, like I said, is included on the phone. It's a really, really cool way of seeing the news you want. Um, right, so yeah, technology, there you go. I want to know about technology because it's what my life revolves around. So yeah, you get a really nice look here. You click on something for about technology and you get all the articles about it in a really nice user interface. It's really good of Samsung to include software that's really good because a lot of companies include software that is absolute rubbish. But Samsung seems to have done the right thing. Um, however, with their game hubs, they have a few hubs like Game Hub here, Music Hub here, and they have Video Hub as well. I find that a bit confusing because I, I do think the average consumer will get a bit confused about that because you've got your video, video player and your video hub. I mean, to the average person, they sound like the same thing, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but basically, what the hubs are, they're basically like uh, ways to purchase. Uh, different media, like you can purchase videos like TV programs uh, from the music hub, you can, it's a bit like iTunes or Spotify, you can listen to all the music you want, all in one service, there you go, it says what it 
uh, does what it says on the tin there. Uh, I think it's 9.99 a month for that service though. And to be perfectly honest, I think Spotify is probably going to be a better option for you. Same with the Games Hub. It's like you probably just want to use the app market that's built in, or the uh, Play Store as it's now called. So I really don't understand that from Samsung, but the uh, music player they include is really good. I've only got Muse on here because I haven't really listened to much music on here, and that's pretty much the band I listen to. Um, I always use Uprising as a little uh, test. If I search it. Oh, I'll show you a more interesting feature first. The music square, which is something that Samsung have included. Um, really quite cool to be honest. Basically you have four things here, exciting, joyful, calm or passionate, depending on what music you want to listen to. So if you want exciting, passionate music, just draw a circle there and then it starts playing the music that it thinks is exciting and passionate. So there we go, I think that's a really cool feature. Uh, if you heard there, the speaker on the back of the phone really isn't too bad. It makes everything pretty loud. I'll just put it up to the microphone. So yeah, not too bad. It's only a phone speaker at the end of the day. Uh, if you put it in, you can also get like this cover flow kind of effect. I think if you go into the albums list, Oops, let's go back into that. You go into the albums list, and I think if you go landscape... Oh, it's not doing it now. But basically you can get this cover flow looking kind of interface, which is pretty cool. You can switch between different albums and songs, which is pretty handy. The video player they, they uh, have on the Samsung is also really good. There it is. Uh, even shows you thumbnails of moving thumbnails of what the video has which is pretty handy you can see there it's showing you some content of what goes on inside that video uh, let's just have a little look at the screen hopefully you can see there the screen on this phone is absolutely brilliant colours are really nice the brightness is right there and it's ultra sharp as well. And one more feature of the video player is if you're playing a video, you can use pop in player, which basically puts the video where you can move it around and you can carry on with whatever you're doing in the background, which is really, really handy. I find that pretty cool and you just tap on the video to go back into the app. Now, like I said, everything on this phone is smooth, right down to the web browsing, which has commonly been uh, a, well, not a strong point of Android. But this phone's running Android 4, and Samsung have added their own little touch to everything. And yeah, even there, you can see how smooth it is. Really, really lovely. If you go on a website, search as the BBC, .co.uk and we'll go on the proper desktop site there you can see there's lots of content on this site lots of pictures but you can just see how smooth it is how smooth everything is you pinch to zoom is perfectly smooth everything is wonderful on it to be perfectly honest uh, you can have up to seven tabs which go in like a cover flow kind of look there we go. So it's eight tabs you can have up to, I think. So yeah, you can scroll through them all. You've got the incognito for whatever you want to use incognito for, which doesn't save your history or anything, which can be handy. So web browsing on this is definitely brilliant, especially with that 4.8 inch screen. It's really, really fantastic. The messaging app on Samsung phones is a little bit different. You enter your recipient here. It's the uh, 
it's just the layout of it is slightly different, but it's really nice and easy to use, and you can obviously use a range of attachments to send them, which is absolutely brilliant. There you go, the phone works absolutely fine, and it has it predicts uh, people. Like if I type TR, it will come up with people and just comes up with people as you type, which is always handy. Uh, logs, favourites, contacts, all of that. And it syncs with Facebook absolutely fine. Uh, the camera on this phone is 8 megapixel and it's among the best I've ever seen. It's really, really fantastic. If I go onto the gallery here, It's really, really detailed. Oh, whoops, gone into crop mode. And that's another thing, which is, it's just reminded me with my little mistake there. Um, if you pinch the zoom out all the way and then hold it there, it goes into crop mode, which you can then obviously crop the picture. Well, sometimes. Then you just click menu and you can edit it. It has really good uh, editing facilities and face tag is another really cool thing where it gets to know people. Like it successfully recognises some of my friends now when I take a picture of them. It says, oh, is this Bob? I don't have a friend called Bob, but that's what it does. It's a really quite cool functionality. Uh, there's features on the Galaxy S which make it really easy to use. Um, and just innovative, uh, it's just simple things, like if you're looking through your contacts, just looking through random people that you probably don't know, you tap on one, you then just put the phone to your ear and it starts calling it, you don't have to tap call or anything or select a number, you just put it to your ear and it starts calling them, which is really nice. And another thing, the screen will not turn off if you're looking at it. The uh, phone uses its front facing camera to know when you're looking at the screen and so if you're looking at the screen but you're not touching it, touching the screen um, it won't turn itself off or won't, won't dim down either which is really really cool so yeah it's really brilliant to be perfectly honest this is definitely probably one of the best phones of the year uh, it will be pitting it against the HTC One X as soon as we can and other than that there's not much else to say about it but it is marvellous it's really really good and I'll be, I'd like to know when uh, the phone's getting the Jelly Bean update because that's really gonna make it even better um, with, every, with every update this is going to get better uh, oh I missed that one app here S Memo is actually really really useful uh, basically a, a note taking app well a memo taking app where you can like do a screenshot like this like that, which you can then like write notes on it. Very similar to the Galaxy Note, uh, but it doesn't have a stylus functionality. So yeah, I think that's about it on the uh, Samsung Galaxy S. Obviously, you've got S Voice as well. Find a near restaurant. I've done a full video on this, so you can go on that. I'll put a link somewhere around here which you can go on. As you can see it's not the quickest, it's not quite as fast as say Siri or Google Now. And this is on pretty fast Wi-Fi. Well I think I'll just leave that but if you want to see more about S Voice then just watch the video. But on the whole, this is an absolutely brilliant phone. I can't fault it in many ways at all. It's really a struggle to fault. <laughs> Battery life is brilliant. The screen is excellent in every single way. It looks the part. It's not too heavy, but not too light either. It feels really well made. Uh, camera is epic. Probably the best I've ever used. So that's about it on the Galaxy S3. It's a shame, but it's got to go. So. Gotta go back to Vodafone, but yeah, I'd like to thank Vodafone 
um, for providing us with this phone.